Hello and welcome to another edition of TCM Live. I am your host, Pastor Larry Roy, and with me as always is the most wonderful, fabulous, author-type person in the whole wide world, my sister Leslie Lane. He had to follow it with all those accolades because it sounded like, with me again... As always, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, want to do that deal. I didn't want to do that deal making. You know, people will go, well, who's just saying, oh, boy, just expect her to be there, and she just, she's comic relief, and yeah. I thought I was the comic relief, and you were like the serious, like, he co-host. Oh. He's the funny guy. Thank you. I'm the, hey, humorous. I prefer humorous. Oh, yeah. Like the bone. Humorous. Isn't he's that a bone? Funny. Yeah, humorous. 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 Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome to. Welcome to TCM. It is wonderful to have you here. Um, there are many different ways, of course. You know that you can reach us. Uh, some of you are watching us via our website, tcmlive.com. In fact, that's how most of those folks are watching us, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can also get us on Facebook. You can hit us up on Twitter. You can send us an email at tcmlive at gmail.com. We love to hear from people, so be sure to let us know how we are doing. Be sure to like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. So. Yeah. Leslie, how are you doing this fine day? I'm doing good. We Can I tell them where yes, we are? Yes, you can tell them where. We are not at the undisclosed location like we were before. No, we're not. We are at Camp Pollock. Pollock, that's yes. right. You'll, Church of God Camp. Did you no, it didn't. I just was trying to think of... If, if there was another name, if I was saying it wrong. Anyway, Camp Pollock. we're at the Church of God campgrounds in Pollock, Louisiana, and it is hot. It's hot. It is It is burning up. Mm -hmm. I, I, my hat is even hot. It, yes. my, my, my hat is sweaty. It's smoking in the back. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> but we have an amazing group of kids. Larry and I got this awesome opportunity. I was able to write devotions for the week, and I get to speak on Tuesday night yes. about evangelism. Um, which is a big word for sharing the love of Jesus with those around you. Yes. And Larry gets to do the conferences every morning. So, anyway. Yeah. So they get to get wonderful things in the morning time. They get to get pumped up, and then they can come go to sleep during my conferences. It's wonderful. <laughs> Nobody's going to sleep during the <laughs> conferences. Anyway, we're going to open up a word of prayer. Yes. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. God, we thank you for each person that has tuned in. And Lord, we ask for your touch and your blessing upon everything that's shared here, uh, on every word that is spoken, Lord, in every life that is touched. Uh, Father, we give this time to you and we ask, Lord, uh, for your hand upon each one of us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we decided to do a deal here at TCM. Leslie and I, we were, we were talking about uh, the correct way to go with a few of these programs and we thought that it might be best for uh, we on the TCM staff to start maybe coming at you every once in a while with some testimonies to let you know who we are where we've been that kind of thing maybe some a particular point in our lives where we've been down how we've managed to fight through our faith and continue to follow Christ yeah. and I, I think that's real important because it like a lot of you guys have been watching us for a while and while we appreciate that you, you look at us um, as, as teachers, as role models, things like that, it, it always helps to be able to personally identify with somebody, though, to, to hear their stories and to be able to go, well, I've been through something like that. Yeah. You know, Now I know how they coped. Or I'll tell you what helps, uh, Leslie, for me as a pastor is to talk to other pastors that have been doing it longer than I have and to hear them going through some of the same struggles. Sometimes uh, you out there... Have you ever felt like you're the only one feeling a certain way? I mean, I know I feel that way sometimes. And just being able to hear, not just other pastors, but to hear other people uh, in deep conversation, they will say something and it will just strike me right at my heart. Yeah. Because I'll think to myself, I thought I was the only one that felt that way. And so we just, we, we thought it was important uh, to be able to come at you, of course, TCM, you know, we believe, you know, Teen Christian Ministries, we believe in, in keeping it geared more towards teenagers. Uh, but, man, I'm going to tell you what, you, you teens now, you guys, we know that you deal with a lot of stuff. And we really want to be right there on the front lines with you. And one of the best ways we can do that, again, is to share a little bit of what we have been through in our lives. Because it's where some of you are right now this very second. God has brought you to this program. God has brought you to this ministry for a reason. And we're going to have, Leslie is going to share with us tonight uh, about a time in her life where she felt like she was drowning. Hmm. And I think that's quite literally, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, so you want to pick it up from there? Sure. Well, you know, it's summertime, so I always think about this testimony about this time of year because every year, um, my dad was a missionary, so I grew up overseas, and every year we would go to the beach for a week in Korea, and we always looked forward to that time. It was always a really good time, and um, my family especially would always stay in the lodge, which was right on the beach, so it was really nice. The oh, first wow. thing, you get up in the morning, and you can go chase crabs and you know, pick up all the shells that you can find, and they actually had, I think they had more shells in 1986 than they do these days. <laughs> uh, it was actually 88, I think, but, um, yes, yes, we are that old. Yes, we are. Yeah, many of you are like, 88, were dinosaurs walking the earth back then? <laughs> they weren't, actually. Well, we were walking the dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. they, they, they you can Google that. Yeah, Google Anyway, so... <laughs> We went to the beach every year, and I really always had a really good time at the beach. And this was the year that I was taking swimming lessons. So I was a little self-confident and thinking that, you know, hey, I'm taking swimming lessons now. I'm an accomplished swimmer. I'm about to get my little um, wristband or whatever. Yeah, I was, I was moving along. Well, one day, um, it was nap time. We were supposed to be sleeping. Uh -huh my sisters and I, because we were in a separate room attached to my parents' room. Would you, would you, I don't mean to interrupt, would you name these sisters real quick, please? Yes, yes. Renee Pippin, yes. who lives in Columbia, Missouri, and Jennifer Crockett, who lives in Monroe, Louisiana with me. Okay, I'll continue. Yeah, okay. They're special sisters. <laughs> They're about to get ratted out in this story, so I didn't <laughs> want to tell their names. But you can blame Larry for that. Anyway, so um, Larry doesn't know the testimony. Do you? No. no. I don't. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we were supposed to be napping, and my sisters decided when we heard Mom and Dad snoring that it was the all clear, uh -huh. and we could go to the beach. Uh, just Dad snoring, and you just assumed Mama was asleep. <laughs> just <clears throat> assumed, <clears throat> yes, because my mother doesn't snore. Exactly. She's, she's That's not a, lady. A lady, like. exactly. Right. She so, wheezes. <laughs> like a train. Anyway, so <laughs> my sisters decided that they were going to go swimming. Well, they thought I was sleeping. I'm four and five years younger than them. So they thought I was sleeping, and I watched them grab their towels and sneak out and go to the surf. And I waited just a little bit because I wanted to follow behind them, but I wanted to swim too. My dad had pulled me in too soon. I did not want to take a nap, and I wanted to go out there and swim. Well, what I didn't know that my dad knew was that the water was very choppy that day, and part of the reason why he insisted that we have a mandatory family nap time was not just because he was old and tired, but because he was protecting us as a family. See, what I didn't know that my sisters knew to look for and didn't was that certain flags indicate certain conditions. And I wasn't paying attention during swimming class. So when I went out there, I didn't notice that all four flags lined up on the beach were red, which meant that the conditions were tumultuous and we were not supposed to go in the water. Well, I just saw my sisters doing it. You know how sometimes you see somebody you know and you trust and they're doing it, so it must be okay for me. Yeah. And so I moved further down the beach, and they kind of went over to this group of people, and they got in, and I watched them get in, and then I got in by myself. I was pretty much a loner. I like to do things by myself. Well, what I didn't know like, is the reason... Like checkers. Yes. Yeah. No, I don't really don't do checkers. <laughs> don't play checkers. No, right not either. by myself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was random. <laughs> um, so the undertow was really strong that day, and um, as almost as soon I, I just I remember it like it was yesterday. Almost as soon as I got waist deep in the water, I realized I couldn't control where my feet were going, and immediately I started to look for my sisters. Well, I had gotten further away from them because the undertow, I don't know if you know how an undertow works. We think about the undertow, it pulls down and it pulls away. So shifting sand, everywhere you walk, it's unstable. 
the, the, the sand is constantly moving. There's no foundation. And a lot of people think that, well, you know, they like to think falsely that they're strong enough to like, well, you just swim. Right. No, it's exactly. pulling you under. Right. And it's pulling, pulling you, you off. Right. Yeah. Right. So I was trying to maneuver up the beach to get what I thought out of the undertow, but what I didn't realize is the undertow was the whole surf line. Well, I saw my sisters in the distance and they were swimming and so I was trying to pull myself out well I could not and before I knew it my feet got pulled out from under me and I was caught and I was being pushed out into the sea it was the most scariest experience in my life and I was about 12 years old when this happened I couldn't see I didn't know which way was up. I mean, I could see my eyes were open because I was looking for anything that I could connect with that would give me stability because if you've ever been in an undertow, you're just rolling and you're rolling and you're rolling and you're feeling this pressure and it's like constantly pushing you out, but there's nothing to keep you steady. And so I... I was losing my bearings. I didn't know where I was. I just knew I was going deeper and deeper and deeper. And I didn't know what to do. And the only thing that I knew to do was to call out the name of Jesus. And my lung, I don't know if you've ever been in an almost drowning situation, but what will happen is your lungs will start to burn and you'll feel like they're going to burst. You have to breathe. Your body will make you breathe. Your body will mm -hmm. make you breathe. And in that cocoon, and I call it a cocoon of water because I just was rolling. It was just like I was in a ball, like a hamster ball or whatever. And I knew that God was there. It's like there was no question in my mind that someone had their eye on me. Someone could see me in this ball of water that was going out of control. And so I remember flailing my arms out as hard as I could because the water was coming up against me and just calling out literally opening my mouth because I couldn't keep it closed anymore and saying God save me and it was just like the sea picked me up and literally launched me onto the beach Wow! I came up on the beach vomiting of course because I had taken in so much water but the thing is Larry I wasn't supposed to be at the beach and I knew this I knew that God had saved me I knew there was no way I could get out of that bubble of water without God yeah. I knew he had spit me up on the beach but I also knew I needed to hightail it back to the lodge before my mom and dad <laughs> found out so shaking leg shaking go ahead um I was um, running back, I was going back to the lodge, and I made it in the lodge, covered myself up with my sheet, and um, pretended like I was sleeping when my sisters came in, and, um, <clears throat> is it working? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, we're having some technical issues. So, my sisters came in, and they immediately woke up my dad and confessed, Dad! We were out on the beach and we almost died. And you know, I guess I knew I was in a bad situation, but I didn't realize, fully realize that God saved me until the very moment when my sisters come back and they tell my dad, Dad, we could have died. We were stuck in an undertow and it took two large German men to pull us out and they too almost drowned. I was probably 78 pounds, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. I was an itty bitty little 12 year old. I had not very much meat on me at all. And I was ejected from the water. Whereas my sisters, who were larger than me and older than me, had to have the assistance of two large German men. Not, not that they're German makes any difference. But I'm picturing Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> get them out and even those men were in danger and I realized in that moment oh my god you have saved me not too long ago um, I was 
I was thinking about that every time the summer comes and every time we think about the beach, I think about that story because it's just so amazing to me. What's amazing is I still go swimming in the beach today, but I was talking about this story and I was encouraging some, some girls that I was talking to to find a scripture verse that kind of would would take them back to that moment and remind them of the favor and the delight of God. And I told him, I said, you know, I haven't really found a verse for that, but I'm going to find one. And I stumbled upon it. I, I wasn't even really looking for it. It's not like I put in a key search or anything like that. And I found this, and it's in Psalms. And I'm not sure the chapter. Um, Go back over see. Right. It's um, Psalm 18. Psalm 18, 16 through 19 tells my story. It says, He sent from on high... He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. I don't know what you may be going through right now. And even though mine was a literal drowning situation, I think sometimes we find ourselves in these situations and we wonder, how am I going to get out of this? Like, this is too much for me. I don't even know how to handle this. I know I shouldn't be here. I'm not I supposed can... to be here in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. You can trace back the steps and you can say, I know exactly what I did wrong to be at this point. But... It doesn't change the fact that I am here. The enemy comes in and he lies to you and he says, I'm not supposed to be here in the first place. I knew what I was doing was wrong. God's forsaken me. He's, he's not going to have anything to do with me now because I turned against him. Right, right. We see it as punishment. We yeah. see those, those tight situations. Because, I mean, I'll be honest with you. In my head, this was one of the things that was going through my head was like, this is my punishment. I knew I shouldn't be swimming. I knew I should be napping. But I'm out here and I'm swimming and this is my punishment. The enemy wants us to look at those hard times and those calamities in our lives as punishment for what we did wrong. But we have to understand that that is not the case. That God delights in us even in the midst of our drowning. Even if our sin led us to that place of drowning, he still longs to rescue us. God's word says that um, in Psalm 46, it says, He is a present help in times of trouble. If you are in a time of trouble, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, He is a present help in this time. You are not isolated. You are not alone. You are not left to fight for yourself. You are not left to drown in a bubble of water that has more power than you could possibly fathom. Your Father God is there. And he wants to help you. And his word tells us over and over again that how we receive that help is that we call on his name. He says, those who call on my name, I will answer them. I will rescue them. And that is your hope. And that is what I want you to know from my story. Even though I was 12 and I almost drowned, thank God I'm here today because I want you to know that there is no wave of sin or sorrow or depression or anything else that you can be caught up in that our Father God has not already devised a plan to get you out. Yes, and I'll tell you one thing I was thinking about while you're talking about this, Leslie, is if you look back, and this is why it's so important to remember what the Bible says. This is why it's so important to remember uh, uh, the Old Testament. You know, the New Testament, of course, is very important. Right. But it's, it's important to remember the Old Testament. If technical difficulty, please stand by. If you look at the Old Testament, if you look at the children of Israel, mm -hmm. you know, what did they do time and again? They ended up in places they were not supposed to be with attitudes they were not supposed to have. Right. The places God told them he wanted them to go, right. they really didn't want to go. And they even started looking back at their situation going, man, tell you what, dude, 
I wish we were back in Egypt. Right. We had it exactly. so much better. Right. Yeah. They, they had it better. They were slaves. We may have been making bricks, but at least we had a lunch break. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to eat the hay that didn't go into the bricks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's you. Maybe uh, Leslie's story, maybe it touches you in that way. Maybe you're like, well, that's great for you, Miss Leslie. I, I love you. That's wonderful. But I feel like I'm even further away from that. You, you're not. Trust us on that. You are not. Because, see, here's the thing, um, it, and I'm not saying take comfort in sin by any means, but you can know this. God looks at sin as sin, no matter what sin it is, whether it's stealing, whether it's murder, whatever it is, God sees it all the same. And so in seeing it all the same, that means with like what he did with Leslie, what he did with the children of Israel, you know, he, he did not give up. He continued to bless when they would turn their eyes on him. Leslie turned her eyes back towards God and said, yeah, what were your exact words? when you God came save up? me. God save me. So time and again, the children of Israel, they would have to turn back towards Daddy God and they would have to say, God save me. Yeah. And what would he do? He would be faithful. Would be faithful. So no matter where you are today, no matter what you've got going on in your lives, no matter what you, no matter what you've got going on in your life, we'll make it more personal, individual basis here. No matter what you've got going on in your life, Daddy God, He wants to pick you up and He wants to brush you off. Even though you're saying, "No, I'm not worthy of it. I don't deserve it. I'm I'm in too deep. I should have never done any of this stuff, and here I am." I know stories, Leslie, of pastors, of youth workers, of people that are in youth ministry, uh, that, that's not for us, um, that have even been in prison before. They, I mean, they've done stupid things, they've done horrible things, and they're in prison. And they end up, I mean, God ends up really touching them. They end up just falling to their knees, and they just, they're withering away on the inside from their sin and their grief and their misery. But a lot of us, a lot of times, unfortunately, that's where we have to get before God can use us. Yeah. But you don't have to get there. Now, if you're already there, if you're already to that point where you're like, I just don't see a reason to go on living, let God in. Don't let it get to that point. Because whether you realize it or not, spiritual warfare, you're fighting against God. You are. Plain and simple, you're fighting against God. A lot of people look at us Christians and they're like, man, you guys... Either, either you like to act like you got it all figured out, or people are like, Lynn, you guys got it all figured out. Neither one of those are true. It's not. And it doesn't have to be as extreme as maybe you've gotten to the point where you don't want to live. Maybe you've just gotten to the point where, you know, I, I don't even care about church. I don't, need, I don't even want to go. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to pray. Change that mentality because I'm telling you, there's two paths that you have to follow. One leads to life and one leads to death. And that can be a spiritual death or that can be a physical death. But I'm telling you, the road that leads to righteousness and the road that leads to life is narrow and very few find it. But if you find yourself on that other path and you've been going that path for quite some time and you think, you know what, I've done this, I've done that, I've defiled my body with drugs, I've had a homosexual relationship. I curse every day. Whatever it is. Like there is no sin that God had not sent his son to shed his blood to redeem you from. God is in the business of redemption. And it's not a business. It's a delight. He delights to redeem those who have fallen. And I love the way you just took that back a step too. Because we just went from the absolute lowest that you can get. I'm, I might be ready to end my life. Mm -hmm. I'm worth nothing, which is not true. Right. All the way back to, I said some curse words today. Right. I, I didn't treat somebody right today. Right. Because those of you that are at that, at that point right there, don't think that your problems are nothing compared to these other things. Because that's the first steps on this path that we're talking about that will lead to destruction. So don't think we're not talking about you. Where you're at is just as vital. It is just as important <coughs> that you realize that Daddy God is there for you now. Yeah. And I mean, if that's all you hear today, 
from us. Hear it clearly. God is there. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever you're facing, whatever you've gotten yourself into, God is there. He does not hide his eyes from those who need him most. All you have to do is call on his name and he will rescue you. So what we're going to do right now, um, I just think it's fitting. Uh, I want everybody out there, you know, you're watching this program, whether it's in the archives or not, whether you're watching it on Thursday night or not, whatever. I want you to I want you to take the problems that you have in your life right now. I'm going to ask you to pray if you would to close this. And what we're going to do is I want you to hold those thoughts in your mind. I want you to take them captive so that Christ can take them captive. And I want you to think about them and I want you to picture you placing them at God's throne. I want you to picture yourself giving them up, giving up that weight, giving up those burdens to Daddy God because He wants to take them from you. He's bigger than those. You know, a lot of us think, you know, well, God's got more important things to worry about. No, He doesn't. He cares about you. He wants you to be okay. I mean, the Bible tells us that He knew each and every one of us before we were formed. Yep. He knew our names before the beginning of the world. Yes, He does care about you that much. So I'm going to ask Leslie, we're going to close this in prayer, ask Leslie to pray for each one of us, because we're, in some form or fashion, guys, we're on that same road. We're still facing undertoes every day of our life, and we have to cry out to Daddy God, please, God, please help me save my life once again. We know you've already saved me. Your son has come into my heart as my Savior. Help me. Help me. Save me from myself. You yeah. know, one of my favorite albums, but Brian had wrote, oh, Save yeah. Me From Myself. Yeah. But save me from myself, God. Yeah. So if you would close us in prayer. Absolutely. Daddy God, I just, I love you. And I, I just want to thank you yet again for saving my life so many times in so many ways. God, we know that there is no life that lives in vain. We know that every life that you have created has purpose and has meaning. And we know that you are the all-loving, all-affectionate, good, and honest God who longs to rescue us. God, I pray right now for those who may be hurting. I pray for those right now who may be struggling to breathe. God, that they would take in a deep breath grace and mercy that finds us at the cross. God, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you that we don't have to go this world alone. I thank you that you've sent him not only to be our mediator, but you've also given us the Holy Spirit that keeps us in line with you, that tells us things that are of all truth, God, so that we can keep our line, our lives in line with you. God, right now, I pray for whoever that person is that is struggling. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would loose those binds that have held them captive for so long. God, we take that thought, that lie, that deception of the enemy that says they aren't worth it or says that they've gone too far or says that it's okay because they feel good when they do it. Whatever it is, God. Whatever lie the enemy has planted, God, we take it captive and we take it from their minds and we lay it at the foot of the cross and know that Jesus bled for just that lie, for just that truth to be replaced, that they are worthy, that there is no distance that they can go from you, that neither height nor depth nor anything can separate us from your love. God, I pray they feel that tonight, that your arms of mercy wrap around them in a brace like they have never felt before. Father God, thank you. Thank you for saving us even from ourselves. Thank you that salvation is more than a one-time experience, but it's a day-to-day -day walk with you. We are, we are consistently saved from the reaches of the enemy. God, help us. Help us, God, in all things. We pray in the name of Jesus. Help us. Amen. Amen. Leslie, thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, got a little teary. <laughs> we pray that you have been blessed by the broadcast. We thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week. 
And in the meantime, feel free to drop us a line. Like I said, you know, you can check us out on our Facebook page. You can share our Facebook page with your friends. That would be great. That would be wonderful. Follow us on Twitter. Send us an email at tcmlive at gmail.com. And if you have a great testimony rescue story, post it on our Facebook. Yeah. We want to hear about it. We definitely want to Share with others how Jesus rescued you. Let us know what's going on in your life. And uh, share this particular webisode if you'd like. Escaping the Undertow. Hey, that's a good that's, title. That's what's going to be the title, Escaping the Undertow Through Christ. I like it. All right, you guys have a good night. We love you. God bless.